Welcome friends. It's nice to see you. I hope that you are having much success in your practice. Today's video lesson will be focused on the circle of fifths regarding the sharp keys and uh, the construction of the, the major scale as it relates to the circle of fifths. I'd like to start with something very, very basic. We've in previous videos, I've talked about this, but I want to draw your attention to something of a principle that I think will be really helpful to you. We will start with the definition of a C major scale as a tetrachord followed by another tetrachord. A tetrachord, it consists of four notes in the key of C, that would be C, D, and E moved by what we call a whole step, two frets. So C, D, E, and then the last one moved by a half step, just one fret. So if we did that scale moving up on one string, we'd have C, D, E, and F. Across the strings, we can move that same distance between D and E by just simply going four and one, and that becomes C, D, E, F. Yeah. Okay, so far so good. Now the next step of the scale, of completing the scale, starts on the fifth note. Now I want you to kind of become aware that fifth note is very important because all of Western harmony starting around 1600 becomes focused on what we call major minor keys. Now we might have thought that's always been the case, but previous to that, in um, the 1500s and the 1400s and all the way back uh, to the bare beginning of Western notation, we were dealing with modes, which were a different system. We had eight of those modes. We're not gonna cover that, but the transition to a major scale, wow, that was a very, very important change. Change in the thought process of how that hierarchy and that scale worked became something that revolutionized music forever. And we still are affected by this. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, yeah. How would it be different? It would mean that different letters could follow one another, right? Well, in keys, the order of keys is different. They move in relationship to five. So instead of the key of C being followed by the key of D, we have to count five from C. And you may have noticed when we did the scale, we did C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Yeah. There's a reason for that. This note here, the fifth note, is going to become very important. If we build a chord on it, we would have a G chord. If we build a chord on the first chord, we'd have a C chord. Let me do that one more time. Wow, that's, it seems almost like if this, then that. Cause and effect. That those two tones and those two chords built on those tones have an implied relationship and most of western harmony is focused on that relationship now as composers compose music with this new language they discovered that they could continue doing this if they started on g so if i started on g i'll do the same idea right here in this position I would go up four notes for the uh, for the first tetrachord, whole step, whole step, half step. Everything is the same as in the key of C, right? But when I got to the next one, that note couldn't be right. It had to be raised to be a perfect match. It'd be whole step, whole step, half step. there we get the note F sharp. So if I'm playing a G scale, the first group of fours, just like the C scale, and the next group of four, 
it's got something new, the note F sharp. So if I'm playing in the key of C and I want to move to the key of G, I'll make sure that I've got an F sharp. Let me see if I can create a little melody here. And you probably noticed right there in the middle, I changed to F sharp. And for a little bit of time, you knew that you were in a different harmonic area. You were now in the key of G. And when I removed that F sharp and went back down to F natural, you found you were coming back down to C, F natural, E. D, C. We can apply this principle to all the scales. Uh, and if we're focusing on the sharp scales, the pattern would go from C to G, from G to D, from D to A, and A to E. If we kept on going, if we go E to B, B to F sharp, and the last one, F sharp to C sharp. So we have actually seven key signatures for the sharp keys, but it's much more rare that you're going to be playing pieces in the key of B or C sharp, so I'm, I'm not going to go that direction there. Okay, we will take a look at the first five. Again, one more time. Now that you have this idea, and realize that every time now that we're moving from one key to the next, they're only different by one pitch, one leading tone. So the leading tone is that seventh note of the scale. That's the seventh tone, and that leads us to the tonic. The new tonic. So again, C major. G major. Starting on G, going to C, and now going from D, and we'll have an F sharp. Okay, now if I go to the next key, it'll be D major. I'm going to move that up over here. This is D, I can do the same fingering I did here, and that will work. So this will be D major, D, E, F sharp, G. And then the next group is going to be A, B, C sharp, D. Now if you want to memorize this pattern, it's a very good one to know, because it can teach you your notes on the fretboard by just simply knowing where those first pitches are. So this is D, I'm in fourth position, second finger. Four, two, one, two, four, one, three, four is the pattern. D, E, F sharp, G, like G major, and now with the new added uh, leading tone, A, B, C sharp, D. The next key, five notes above D, A, yes. And we can just move straight across and we'll have an A here. Same fingering again. Two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four will be A, B, C sharp, D, just like D major was. And now E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. Shall we go one more? E major. I'll move two frets above. This note now here is the note E. So going up on the fifth string, that's all I've been doing, from C to D to E, two whole steps. And when I went from G to A, I went a whole step from G to A on the sixth string. 
same pattern of fingering. Yep. So the same pattern of fingering here as well. But now we've got to remember, we were in the key of A before, and the key of E is closely related to the key of A. It has four sharps, but three of those sharps we, keep, we can find in the key of A, as we just did. We did A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. So we had C sharp, F sharp, G sharp. What is the leading tone in the key of E? You only have to think one letter back because there are only seven letters in the musical alphabet. That'd be D sharp. So when we get to D, we would want to make that a D sharp. Following the same fingering, we will get the same result. This is E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. And then the last one's gonna go from B to E. B, C sharp, D sharp, and E. fun with this. You get to have fun by practicing that and the thinking about the names of the notes. Let's do a little practice uh, and review at the same time. And if you put this into your daily practice routine, you will have a new understanding, at least within one octave, on the guitar and a fingering that complements that. Okay, here we go. Starting in C, position two. We're going to go from C to G, D to A, and E. I know we could go to B. I'll think about it. Okay. Uh, also, last thing. This shape is going from here to here, C to G. I could go from C to G this way. If I go up, I've got five notes. One, two, three, four, five. That shape is a, the shape of a fifth. But if I go down, there's only four notes. One, two, three, four. C, B, A, G. We call that an inversion. Coined the rule of nine that anytime we have an inversion, the sum will be equal to nine. So a fifth going up becomes a fourth going down. But what also is important is notice the difference in shape. This will be true everywhere, except the third and second string. Straight across is a fourth. Straight across is a fourth. Straight across is a fourth. And even on the first and second string, only the third and second is different. Okay. I hope that's relatively clear, maybe very clear. Let's do these scales to close our lesson. C. And it's going to be two four one two four one three four, and you can say the letter names with me: C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. G major, straight across, down four, which is up equal to up five. G, A, B, C. sharp G now to move up a fifth this is diagonal because when we get to this it was D now I'm going to put two there we'll do it again D E F sharp G and then we're going to add C sharp right A B C D. Back down, we go down a fourth rather than up a fifth, which is the same, it's just inverted. So we go A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Good. Up a fifth. Same fingering as before, and that's the note E. So we went from C to G to D to A, now we're at E. That was E, 
F sharp, G sharp, A. E, F sharp, G sharp, A. And then. Yeah? So we had B, C sharp, D sharp, E. B, C sharp, D sharp, E. One more time. Okay, let's do B. This one's got five sharps. I don't know if we're gonna have many pieces in B, but we came this far. Might as well might as well do it. Here we go. We're in B. We're gonna have B, C sharp, D sharp, E, which was the same as E major, right? And now we're gonna keep on going. F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. That was a B7 chord to an E chord. Well, what would happen if I turned this E chord into an E7 chord? I'd be in the key of A. And if I turn this A chord into an A7 chord, D. And if I turned it into a D7 chord, I got that. If I turn this G chord into a G7 chord, so forth. By the way, the reason why the seventh chord was a very important one is that in that chord, we noticed that we had a change in the leading tone. The seventh note of this, that, that chord canceled out. So we went the opposite direction. So if we add a sharp, we are moving up from C to G to D to A to E and the B, but if we remove one of those leading tones, we're going back down. And you'll find this in pieces of music. In fact, uh, what inspired this video was the sight reading video I just completed, where we have a point where he adds the D sharp to suggest we were moving to the key of E. And then immediately thereafter, removes that D sharp and goes back to the key to a D natural, and we've got an E seventh chord. Okay. It's a teaser. I hope that this was really informative, that you're feeling more inspiration to practice your scales. There's a host of reasons, but one is becoming more informed, and that information can be a tool for you to help your sight reading, to better understand pieces of music and how they harmonically work, and that can be not only help for you as a performer, but it gives you clues as a person who might desire to improvise or compose a piece for yourself. Wishing you lots of happy hours of practice. Till next time. <laughs>